Okay, first of all, uh, I will just say I have uh, not received any financial or commercial funding or support for this session. So, you can see my audio? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. Bismillah rahman rahim So, first of all, uh, I will start with uh, my topic. Today, we are going to discuss performance management and performance improvement uh, performance improvement tools performance management is an approach used to manage performance of an organization it can play an important role in the success or failure of the business and performance management can be applied to an organization or a business unit uh, or any project or any uh, on any employee for performance improvement we are using different tools uh, like in this picture, you can see that uh, there are many tools which we are using during the performance management and performance improvement. So this picture is just showing different tools. We will uh, discuss all these one by one in the next slides. So just I will give you a brief uh, review of the tools that, for example, we are starting with the planning. And then during planning, we are using the Hoshin planning force field analysis and Gantt chart. These are three tools planning. Then for decision-making, we are using brainstorming, affinity diagram, selection gate, task list. After decision-making, we are uh, using the data collection tools. In data collection, we are using the key performance indicators and checklist. After data collection, we have the tools for data analysis. During data analysis, we are using run chart, control chart, histogram, scatter diagram. And uh, whenever after uh, we have the data available, we are using the tools for root cause analysis. That if, if there's any problem coming in the run chart and uh, the data is variable, the data is variation, there's a variation in the data, then we will use the root cause analysis tools. And the root cause analysis tools, we are using the flow chart, the fishbone diagram, and Pareto chart. So now we will discuss one by one. Uh, but before starting these tools, uh, I will just tell you about uh, these types of variable. Uh, I think Dr. Raya already discussed in the last lecture, so I will not go in the detail. Just uh, this, we have two types of variable, categorical data and uh, quantitative data. So I will just uh, jump to the next slides. You already have idea about uh, this one. Okay, so we will start with the tools for displaying the uh, data. Displaying of nominal or, or adrenal data. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you, doctor. I think yeah. the, your screen is not visible now, your right. presentation. Uh, Your presentation. My, my presentation, or the let me check on that. Yeah, can you share? I think you stop sharing. Okay, I will see.
Uh, it's okay now? Yes, it's okay now. So, uh, because uh, on this, sorry, uh, for this screen, I have uh, coming some uh, here like a stop video mute. How I can remove this one? You are, uh, your screen is okay? Yeah, yeah, I can see your screen. It's okay. I think uh, you just have to uh, don't uh, keep your scroll the tab up. Dr. Shahjah, don't keep your screen on the upper screen. Yes, that will be the screen on the upper screen. Click on the upper screen. Yes, click on the cursor on the side. We'll start with the displaying of nominal or original data. For the nominal or original data, we are using pie chart and bar chart. And displaying of the numerical data, we are using the frequency table, histogram, frequency polygon, box plot, scatter diagram, and line graph. So first of all, pie chart, uh, this chart, this type of chart we are using to display relative, relative frequency percentages of the proportional relationship with a group. U usually used to display parts of whole in percentage. Like if you see in this example that uh, there's a data of surgical site infection. This is one data of the hospital that after the surgery, uh, mostly where the infection are happening. So if you see the urology have 22%, ortho have 11%, gynae 21%, and gen general surgery 46%. So this type means this is a whole group of data. So we can show this data by pie chart. The other chart is the pie chart. Uh, this chart we are using when we have many groups different groups and we want to compare these categorical value, uh, variable for, uh, and each bar is representing the category. If you see in this graph, there is this, this graph is the data of the average hand disinfectant used in the department. So if we doctors, uh, there's data for doctors, there's data for the nurses and nurses this blue color is showing for the medication and this uh, yellow color is showing for surgery and this other color is for the dental. So these three groups, we are uh, uh, showing that uh, the, how, how much they are using this, this disinfectant. So this is very clear by this uh, graph because it is visually uh, easy to see the visual graph. Uh, frequency table, in the frequency table, we are using the different frequencies. For example, uh, this is the example of the distribution of injury type at workplace. If there's an organization and we want to check that uh, in this organization, which type of injury happened. So if you see the file, 14 types of this uh, injury happened. Cut eight types of eight times this uh, injury happened. So when we are using this type of data, we are using the frequency distribution chart. Uh, now this, uh, from, the, from this slide, we are starting the displaying data for the numerical data. The previous, which we use pie chart and the bar graph, we are using for the numerical data, but uh, sorry, for the categorical data. But for numerical data, we are using the, this one frequency and then the histogram. A histogram is a special type of bar chart used to display the variation in continuous data. The histogram illustrates the shape or distribution of the, of the data by indicating how often different values appear. And high bars indicate mean, median, like this, if you see here, the high bars are showing the, uh, you can see my cursor, huh? it's easy. So, uh, here, the high bars are uh, showing the mean and median. But in this bar graph, uh, there should be no space, like in the, we should, in this histogram, there should be no uh, gap, like in the bar graph. And at least we should have data which can make the five bars in this one. And here, uh, we are using this one for the uh, data which we have uh, more groups available. So if you see in this data, what is the example? The example is showing that histogram of pharmacy drug dispensing turn around times. 
So how many, in how many minutes we are dispensing our medication? So here on the y-axis, this is the frequency observation. And on this uh, here on the x-axis, the time. So if you see that uh, in this zero to 10 minutes, there's one observation that this, this group of medication reach in, in the 10 minutes. And the last, if you see this type of group reached from 90, sorry, uh, this type of group reached from 90 to 100 minutes. But mostly what the data is showing, that mostly data is showing that medication reach from 41 to 50 minutes. Our six to seven observation are showing that medication reached from 41 to 50 minutes. So that's why this histogram is very easy to visualize that what's going on in our department. Then this is a box plot. Box plot is also uh, same like the histogram. A box and whisker plot is defined as a graphical method of displaying variation of the data. A histogram analysis provides a sufficient display, but a box and whisker plot can provide additional data detail while allowing the multiple set of data to be displayed in the same graph. Box, um, box and whisker plot allow for comparison of data from different categories for easier and more effective. So just I will give you the, I will not go ahead in the more detail because we don't have more time. So I will just give you the major important. I will just tell you that how we are uh, uh, means defining the box plot and how to integrate. During when you see a box plot, you will see here uh, we are dividing the data in uh, quarter one, quarter three, and uh, here the if you see the outliers in this place, and in the between there's a median. Sometimes uh, they are using the this uh, uh, percentile instead of the percentage. So don't be confused with the percentile and the percentage. 25th percentile, what does it mean? That the value below which the lower 25% of the data are contained. Means less than this one, data is 25%. And here the quarter three is known as the 75th percentile. What is the meaning of the 75th percentile? The value above which the upper 25% of data are contained. I will give you an example, then you will understand by this one. So whenever you see the data on the box plot, you will easily know that this data outliers means this is something happening here. This, there's a variation coming. If there's no variation, it is coming here in the uh, median. Uh, so uh, I will give you the example of the percentile. You should know the difference between the percentile and the percentages because many questions are coming. They are using the terminology for the percentile. A percentile is the value at particular rank. For, for example, if you score on test is 75th percentile, a common interpretation is that only 5% of the score were higher than you. If anybody is saying that you are 75th percentile, it means there is 25% above you and 75% lower you. Like this example, we have 15 students and they gave one test. Out of 50, they received this score. So now, if this 35 here, this is the median. And this is known as 50, 15th percentile. But if you calculate the percentage, percentage will be different than the percentile. So percentile is the median. And we will divide this data in like see here in this picture, the Q1 and Q3. This is quarter one. This is median. This is quarter three. So this quarter three is 75th percentile. So you will just remember this concept that 75th percentile means there's a data more than this 25% and less than this uh, from this data is 75%. Now the, we will go for the next uh, graph, the scatter diagram. This is also a very useful uh, diagram using for the uh, numerical data. A scatter plot is used to study possible relationship between the things, variables. Now, if you see in this uh, example, the first one here, this example is for the average waiting times to see a doctor emergency department. How we are interpreting this graph, we will put the both data. For example, you want to see 
the doctors are saying that when the number of patients are increasing, then waiting time is increasing. So on the x-axis here is the number of patients, this data on the x-axis. On the y-axis, the data is the waiting time. So we want to see now that doctor, uh, head of department is saying our waiting time is increasing because patient is increasing. So scientifically, we want to prove it. So what we will do, we will put the both data like in this dots. So if we will see here, this dot here, 55. So if the, when the data is increasing like this way in the arrow upside, it means that it is showing scientifically that when the patient are increasing, the waiting time also increasing here. So it is very clear in the other, this example, that this example is for the, uh, the head of department of nurses, they are saying that when we have less nurses, then fall of patient are increasing. Less nurses means they have more vacancies. So if you see here, the number of nurses vacancies are increasing. So this dot, this dot, this dot is increasing the number of nurses and the upper above dots here are increasing the falls. So this data is showing us that as the number of vacancies of nurses increasing, the number of falls are increasing. So it means the head of nurses is saying correct that when there is less nurses, we have number of falls increased. So we need more stuff. But sometimes maybe they are wrong, like in this example. This example, which we discussed before, is the strong positive relationship which they are saying. But here in the other picture, where we see the hair, the high hair, the number of vacancies here uh, is this point is high. And the data, if you see here, the number of falls are decreasing. So if number of falls are decreasing, so it means this is negative relationship. And when, if you see here, the weak, uh, when we have dots are very far from this line, it is positive weak relationship. But when this line is coming down here, then this is the weak negative relationship. So this di diagram we are using uh, to visualize our uh, data, that there is a positive relationship in the data or there is a negative relationship of the data. The other one, this is a frequency polygon. This is a simple graph. When we will discuss the uh, data analysis, I will explain you there. This is just increasing the frequency. You can see like histogram. Now we'll discuss the line graph. In the line graph, uh, it is easy to see your uh, results. Whenever you have results and you want to see in the line graph, like this is the example of UGG brand growth rate in 2002 to 2011. This is a, UG is a brand of the shoes. Just I want to show you the example. So if you see here in this line graph, in 2002, uh, they start 24% growth and 2003 and 2004, this is 21% growth. So the growth is increasing. So this is, if the growth is increasing, this line will go up. Then growth is decreasing, line will go down. In the data analysis, I will give you the more detail of this one. This is just to show you that how the line graph is representing. Uh, now we will discuss about the data collection tool. Previous tools which we discussed is all, this is only for the displaying of the data. So, so now we will start to discuss the data collection tools. We have two data collection tools, key performance indicators and check sheets. Key performance indicators are a quantitative measure of a specific part of a process. Uh, successfully, quality indicators should be valid and reliable. Indicators are used when a team needs a baseline data about how process is performing and detailed data. And this uh, indicators demonstrate the effect of particular improvement. When we are using this uh, key performance indicator, when, for example, we are in our hospital, we are giving uh, prophylactic antibiotics. And we want to see that we are giving the correct uh, antibiotics for the correct diagnosis or no. 
So we will start to collect the data of the prophylactic anti antibiotic. Uh, that we will see that uh, which antibiotic we give to the patient, and then we will see what time we give. Usually we are giving 30 minutes or four, uh, one hour before the surgery. So after collecting data, we will analyze the data. So this is known as the indicator. This is the indicator which we are using for the prophylactic antibiotic. For example, we are we can use for the warfarin also that we are checking the INR result of warfarin or no. So that's why we are using this key performance indicators in the hospital as per our needs. <clears throat> there are two major types of indicators, sentinel event and aggregate data. Uh, this the now I will just share with you. This is the three important points. In the exam, you will uh, receive many questions for this one. That key performance indicators are three types: a structure, process, and outcome. So, just I want to make you easy to understand what is the structure, process, and outcome. For example, uh, in your hospital, you have uh, equipment for imaging, like X-ray machine. So X-ray machine, if you are checking the data of X-ray machine, this is the structure that you have available that uh, equipment or no. Uh, how, what is the process indicator? Process indicator means with that machine, how many patients you diagnose? This is the process that you diagnose. What is the outcome indicator? Outcome indicator means due to that machine, how many cases early diagnosed? So by this picture, you will also be very clear that let's see, uh, this is our hospital. And a structure, what does it mean, a structure indicator? A structure indicator means health system, facilities, equipment, credential. And what is the process, the test and treatment procedures, patient experience? And what is the outcome? A health outcome of patient satisfaction. Then the second tool for the data collection is the check sheet. This is very simple that if you want to collect the data, you will make a check sheet to collect the data. So you will just put the columns and the headings, what you need, what you want to collect the data, how you will display the data. So you will make your own sheet. Uh, like here, uh, typically a blank sheet, which is easy to record qualitative or quantitative data, a step of check sheet to use, agree on data to be collect, decide who will collect the data and select a sample size, distribute the sheet and data uh, and collect the data. So if you see in this example that, that we are collecting the data of the number of telephone interruption in the radiology department, you can say number of telephone interruption in the pharmacy, that how many times we are receiving the calls which are interrupting us. So wrong telephone number, five times on one day, Tuesday, two times, Wednesday, one, one time, Thursday, five times, so like total, total, this is 20. Information request, they are, how many times they ask the drug information query from the doctor, so this is two times, so this is simple. After the data collection, we have uh, another important tools for the planning, for the planning. So for planning, we have four important tools, ocean planning, Gantt chart, error diagram, and task list. You are already doing these things in your department, in your organization, but you don't know the names that what we are doing. So most of you already know the things what you are doing already. So just we will discuss today that what is the name of these tools which you are using already. So what is the Hoshin planning? Hoshin planning is defined as an ongoing effort undertaken by the organization as a whole throughout the process of continuous performance improvement to move towards its goal long term. As you see in this picture, that in the Hoshin planning, first of all, they will establish the vision that what they want to do. Then they will develop breakthrough objectives. After that, they will define annual objectives that and annually what they want to do. And then they will uh, divide that uh, goals. And after that, the each department head will execute annual objectives. After execution, the like pharmacy department, they will execute, they want to start IV room from this year. Then after monthly review, then we will do the monthly review that in our goals, where are we now? And then at the end, we will do annual review. 
that in the whole uh, annual, what we did until now as per our vision. So this is the ocean planning. Then the Gantt chart. Gantt chart also a tool for the planning, but this one we are using for a specific project. If you see in this uh, example, that let's say we have, we want to do research. So what we will do, we will decide that planning we will do from January to March. And during this time also, we will do the research. And then we will do the design up to April. Then we will do the implementation of the research up to June. And then we will follow up. So in this graph, in this uh, chart, the vertical line is, is showing today, that where we are today, and when we will complete this, our project. So this is for a specific project. Arrow diagram. The arrow diagram is also known as the activity network or critical path diagram. An arrow diagram nodes represent a start and end uh, or arrow represent activities. In this one, uh, this is essential technique for using critical path is to construct a model of project that includes the following. A list of all activities required to complete the project, the time duration, and the dependencies between the activities. So it will be like this. If you want to make a means critical pathway that when the procedure will start, how much time it will take, then who will do this one, then when it will finish. So it will be, this arrow diagram will be like this. Now the other uh, tool is the task list. In the task list, what we are doing, task list also known as a planning gate or deployment chart. These terminologies are very important because when you will receive the question in the CPHQ, they will use many terminologies. So if you don't know the terminology, you cannot understand the question because mostly the questions in the CPHQ is for the analysis. So you should understand the scenario there. Task list is the most familiar performance improvement tool used to schedule a project task. It has the following characteristic. Keep the team organized and on track. Keep record for what has been done so that nothing will be overlooked. Use to identify steps to be taken, timeliness and responsibility of whom. After this one, we will discuss now the tool for the decision, that how we are doing the decision. For the decision, we are using the brainstorming, affinity diagram, uh, nominal group technique, multi-voting, Delphi method, selection gate, and spaghetti diagram. So now we will uh, just discuss one by one. Brainstorming, as you see in this picture, brainstorming is a creative group process used to generate large volume of ideas in minimum time. For example, you have you want to start any project or you have already problem in your department. So you want to ask your staff that what, what why these problems are coming and what we have to do. So brainstorming tool you will use at that time. Brainstorming required clear direction, active participation of all the members of team and facilitated by the group leader. The importance of brainstorming is stimulate creativity, ensure participation of all participants, strengthen the team and result in rich list. So this tool, by this tool, you will receive many ideas uh, many ideas of the problem that why this problem is happening and how we can solve this problem. So what is the basic rule for this brainstorming? Focus on the quantity, means you need more ideas and withhold criticism. You, know, you will inform your employees that don't criticize any person because let them give any idea, no problem. We will see later it, it is possible or not possible. And unusual ideas, welcome unusual ideas, and then com combine and improve the ideas. After the after we finishing this uh, tool, the brainstorming, we will use another tool, affinity diagram. In this affinity diagram, because what why we use this tool? Because during the brainstorming, we receive many ideas. So now we want to categorize these ideas. So at that time, when we want to categorize that ideas of our meeting, we will use this tool. Uh, so what's the benefit of affinity diagram? Bearing a recognizable shape of shapeless issues. 
simplify large or complex tasks in small project, help to narrow the focus on sensible fashion. So how we will do uh, this affinity diagram, record each idea on a card or notes, look for ideas that seem to be related and sort card into group until cards have been used. Like you see in this uh, picture, which I show you here, that there's problem going on for the INR in the department. INR not checked, uh, not on the time, uh, that before giving those, there's no INR value. So the staff, uh, after the staff meeting, they find all this problem. So for example, this no medication reconciliation. Now this is coming under education. So this is the major category education. Like here, uh, no flag from lab or no medication, uh, no return handover. So this is the communication. So we put all this problem under communication. Here, uh, INR machine was broken. So this type of problem will come under heading of environment. So all the problem we categorize in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups. Now this all problem categorized in this seven groups. That's why we are using this affinity diagram to uh, make a shape of our problem. After that, now we want to go, we have already the problem, we categorize the problem. Now we want to see which, which problem we have to solve first and which is the important. At that time, we are using this technique multi-voting. Multi-voting is diplomatic non-threatening selection process used to narrow a broad list of ideas generated by the brainstorming at any stage of performance improvement process down to those that are most important for the further attention. It can be repeated series of words until the list is narrowed down. So we will just start in the words that uh, which problems we will first, uh, first we have to uh, give importance. So you will get the different words from your team. This is important, this is important, and then you will make a further uh, narrow down your list. There's another tool also we are using, nominal group uh, team. Uh, before which we use this tool, in this one, all are giving at the same time, yes or no, yes or no. But in this one, nominal group, we will just give them, all the members, one sheet, and they will write there that what is the important. So it is easy for all, there's no more uh, crowd, no more uh, uh, criticism, just they will submit their sheets to the group leader and then he will decide. So each member will work alone and used when members have different opinions. Yeah, this is a very important point that we are using this one when the people are from different groups and uh, they have different opinions, the more better, they will not discuss uh, in front of each other, they will just write, write down on the paper. After that, the Delphi method. A technique. This technique is a combination of all these procedures which we discussed, the brainstorming, multi-voting, nominal group technique. When we are using this Delphi method, when the group members are not at one place, like there are many groups like Salman Habib group, they have many hospitals, so, and they want to uh, sort out these issues. So they will use Delphi method, they will send by email, or by any other way to the problems to the each group member and the, uh, all the members. And then like this in picture, what they will do, the question one, pose broad problem to ask for answer and comments. Now they will send email to all groups. Then they will receive answers and comments. Then feedback one, analysis and summarize. Then what, what we will do, we will analyze and summarize. Then we will do again round two. Pose modified problem by integrating the feedback one to invite participant, re-evaluate and revision of the A1, then A2, re-evaluation of the revision of the confirmation of A1. So we will further narrow down. And until we our, uh, until we satisfying consensus on the some issues that now this is the narrow down issues, we have to solve first these issues. So Delphi technique basically is a combination all this uh, tools we will use when the all the group members are not in one place. Uh, this uh, this tool uh, selection get this tool is used to items and describe them in terms of weight. And now this when we are using uh, this tool that we have many uh, options and all options are very good. Now scientifically we want to prove that this option is good. 
before we use the voting. But there's another way uh, other than the voting that which option is more better. The selection grid draw a team toward consensus in a logical and objective way that reassure team members of the validity of the decision making. That you will be very sure that this decision which we make is scientific decision. One of the most important characteristics of prioritization metrics is easy and quick implementation. Uh, now I will give you this example. For example, we have uh, we want to buy equipment. There are four equipment. They have different uh, uh, pros and cons, like cost effective, decreased effect, increased productivity, and user friendly. First of all, what the team will do, the team will decide the score of each. They will decide for the score. In the exam, you when you will have the question in the CPSQ, you will they will give you already this uh, this weightage. For the cost effective, the weightage is 0.85. For the decreased effect, weightage is 0.8. For the increased productivity, the weightage is 1.75. For user friendly, weightage is 0.6. So how you will uh, select which machine is better? You will just, uh, you receive this score three. So three multiplied by 0 0.85, two multiplied by 0 0.8, two multiplied by 1.75, three multiplied by 0 0.6, and then you will add this, this score here. So this is the weightage of each machine. So if you see the new equipment number two get more score 11.75. So this is now scientifically proved that the, the new equipment too is better because this is user friendly and user friendly, uh, this machine got four points and increased productivity received three points and decreased effect received three points and cost effective also. So this chart we are using when we need scientifically decision. Now, spaghetti uh, diagram. A spaghetti diagram is a graphical representation of the flow of movement used in the lean manufacturing acti activities. It is used to detail the actual physical flow and distance involved in the work, work process. Uh, as it is very clear from the spaghetti that uh, if you see these lines, you will remember now spaghetti. So this tool, basically we are using to decrease the waste. This is the Six Sigma lean uh, tool when we want to use our waste, waste of many kinds, waste of people, waste of knowledge, waste of equipment. So if you see in this diagram that how many processes are going on, different processes are going on. So what we did when we implement this spaghetti diagram and this lean project, then we uh, decrease more waste. Maybe we decrease the computer, we save our staff, we save the fatigue of employees don't go here and there and here like here. They have like, for example, we have pharmacy. So from the pharmacy, if we want to decrease the waste, now how many times nurses are coming getting the medication? If we will use the tubing system, which is the automatic system, you will send medication by tube, it will go directly to ICU. So you, reduce the waste of the nursing staff. If they will come from ICU to your ward, how many minutes they will take to come to pharmacy? And how many time uh, to pharmacy aid will go to the, their ward? If you have tube system, it will be reached there two minutes. So you save the staffing, you save their fatigue. So by this respect diagram, we just want to know where is the, we are wasting more of our staff and other equipments. Now we will uh, start the data analysis, the tools for the data analysis. Uh, for the data analysis, we are using the line graph. We already discussed before, control chart, also a type of a line, line graph, run chart, also type of the line graph, control chart, uh, sorry, this is second time, force field analysis and interrelationship diagram. Now we'll discuss one by one. In the line graph is a chart that plot point on a graph to show level of performance over time. If you see in this example, there are three machines and here the data on the X axis is the scraped products and here the months. So we want to see which machine have more problem, which machine have the more problem, which machine have more scraped 
output gaps. So with this, uh, we will analyze the data. If you see in the January, this machine, machine number three has less scrap product. But if you see in the January, this machine number two have more scrap products. So like this, and if you see Achoo. this machine too in the May, too many scrap uh, products are going on. So it is very easy to analyze by this line graph that where is the problem coming and why then we will just uh, do the root cause analysis that why this machine have problem at this one. Then uh, run chart. Run chart is also line graph, but this is uh, uh, show, uh, different from the line graph that I will show you here in this picture that how is the run chart different. So just see this picture. Uh, this is the run chart. I will go back. Run chart is a chart that graph data over time in relation to central point. It's a superior to narrative sense, it is show a trend over time. What is the uh, benefit of run chart identify trend and pattern in the process identify how far we are from a central point understand how process is working and identify areas in need of improvement and clarify performance is static or changing uh, and we will use this one when you should have more data so how is the run chart identifying areas of improvement this is very important that uh, what is the shift six or more consecutive data points either all above or below the central line trend a trend is indicated by five or more consecutive data points all going up or down down astronomical point a data point that is obviously bluntly different value a shift and trend or astronomical data point are all signals of non-random patterns and should be investigated to gain a better understanding when I will show you the picture, you will understand more. So like see in this graph, this graph is a run chart and here, uh, this is for the infection rate. Now we are checking the infection rate in the ward six in our hospital. If you see here that uh, January, they are going up and then down in the March, then going up here, and then going down more in the June. So what does this data is showing? Why this data is going down? So it means here we implement any project, we educate the nurses, we educate the doctors, how to reduce the infection, wash the hands. So when we observe this data, we know, oh yes, our project is working and the infection control is now is okay. So it's going down, less infections are happening. So here, now we are happy. Uh, uh, so here, just I will show you that what is the meaning of the shift, which I should told you before. Shift, what we discussed before, that any six point above the central line. Now this is the central line. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, more than six points. So this is known as shift. And here, if you see, this is more up. This is the astronomical data, means there is something wrong. Why this data is going more up? And when there is a five point ascending or descending, this is known as trend. So all this data is showing that there is some variation. If trend happening, it means there's a variation. If shift is happening, it means there's a variation. Astronomical means there's a very big problem. So by this chart, we can uh, uh, we can see that this is very easy. When you just uh, attend a meeting and you see the data, you can analyze, yes, there's some problem going on, that there, the, there's a variation in our process. Now the control chart, control chart, also known as Shivar chart or process behavior chart. So this terminology is also very important, I told you. Control chart is like run chart, but it includes a specifically determined control limit on each side of the central line. The control lines are equal standard deviation plus minus three. The aim is to reduce common cause variation and eliminate special cause variation. Control chart is designed to identify trends and patterns, the type of variation, 
common cause, special cause, or the process is specifically within the control or not. Like this is the example of the control chart. So what is the advantage of the control chart? In the control chart, we make the limits. This line is showing the upper control limit. This is by statistics, we use the statistics. And we, by this statistics, we use this line, this value. This is upper control. Our variation should not go above the, this line. And this down here, this is the lower control limit. Our variation should not go down this line. And if it is between, this means this is this line is average. So if it is in the between, this is going, uh, then this is common cause variation. So this control chart is the example of the target hardness of the tablet. We have a machine in the industry and we are preparing the tablet. So how much the hardness of tablet should be? So if you see this data is with, with, with in, in the, this variation is okay. Common cause, this is common cause variation. But now this point is going, uh, uh, crossing the upper cause uh, level, upper control level. So it means we have to find out what's the problem. We have to investigate here. We will ask the head of department why this happened. You have to investigate. And why if, if any point is going down, hardness is very less, we have to also investigate. So this all the things uh, is for the uh, uh, control chart. The last uh, tool is the interrelationship diagram. Interrelationship diagram we are using, then we have one problem and there's many possible uh, causes. Like you see here, uh, overly optimistic promised dates for follow-up calls. Now this happened, there are many calls are coming for you promise them. So what's the problem? Excessive over scheduling of patient, inadequate training of the new nurses and assistant, high turnover of nurses, poor handoff, inconsistent use of different labs, inadequate system of log. All these problems are making this issue. Now the force field analysis. Uh, this type of analysis we are doing when we want to make a new project and we want to see that this project will be successful or no. So we will make a force field analysis like here in this example, introducing a new technology in office. Now we will do a meeting, uh, all the staff will come, some will give the points which is for and some will give against like here, they are saying, what is the far good point management pressure that we have to uh, uh, do this. We have to introduce this new technology, robust IT support, quick upgrade capacity, improving efficiency, easily to adopt by younger staff. This all are the far, but against, uh, what's the against uh, coming the issues for this technology, resistance from finance and HR department. They are saying this is too, if, uh, too much cost uh, we you need, more money we need. Need for additional hardware. Now this is an again against point that you should need uh, additional uh, hardware. The third point, expensive to upgrade. This technology is very exp expensive to upgrade. The fourth point, time lost in upgrade. And then the five point, extensive training required for older employees because this is new technology is coming. So first of all, we need more, uh, 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 more training for the employees. After finishing this force field analysis, what we have to do, we will, we will try to decrease this against point by the management. So if we decrease this one, then we can implement this new project. <clears throat> this point already we discussed. Okay, now the tools for uh, displaying uh, the storyboard. A storyboard is consists of the chart, graph, and simple text. It is used for the tools for effective presentation to teamwork to variety of ideas. A storyboard is just uh, like a poster presentation, you all know. So I will not go in detail. Like a poster presentation, we make a story that what was our project, what was our objective, how we collect the data, then after collection data, what we put the, our uh, means uh, 
corrective actions, after corrective action, what was the result, and then how much we improved. So this is like a story. Now at the end, tool for the understanding the root cause. Now after analysis the data, we found there's the problem. So how, how, to, how to know that where's the problem and how to solve this problem? So these are very important tools, cause and effect diagram, known as Ishikawa diagram, fishbone diagram, flow chart, Pareto chart, 5 y tree, stratification chart. So this uh, uh, cause and effect diagram is very important for the problem solving. This is a retrospective way of finding. It means problem already happened, now you just want to check why this problem happened. So I will go directly uh, for the picture. So you to understand first, this is a picture of the uh, fishbone diagram. We have here problem healthcare delivery quality. The quality is not good for the healthcare. So I'll go back again. The main purpose of RCA is to find underlying problem that increase the occurrence of error and to prevent future harm and prevent adverse event recurring through determining the factors involved. Root cause analysis assessment of problems and data collection could be done through observation, survey, interview, or chart review. How you will collect the data, you will just do call a meeting, and then you will start to ask that why this problem happened. Everybody will give you like the brain, brainstorming. They will give you different types of problem that this happened because of the man, because of the machine problem, because of the policy problem, because of the process. So this means here we need a multidisciplinary team to make this uh, fishbone diagram. And one of the most effective method for finding a root cause is through discussing the problem with the concern staff. If you have a problem in the medication storage, then you have called the pharmacy store team and the uh, staff responsible for the uh, storing of the medication. So what are the rules for how we are making this uh, fishbone diagram? There is a, we will use this uh, five things, people, person involved in the process, methods, any hardware, equipment, materials like TPN bag, problem in TPN bag, syringes, needles, measurement data generated from the process, environment, the condition in which process operates. So we will look after all these issues. So see in this picture, we have problem in healthcare quality. So why this problem is coming? Now, if we'll go for the main handwritten prescription, problem in handwritten prescription, problem in memory forget, problem in treatment differences. What is the problem in material? Massive invoices. If the machine is not working, it will come under this heading, medical device failure. If there's a problem of environment, physician store, uh, storages, high patient, uh, sorry, physician shortages, high patient transaction. And uh, if we have problem in the treatment error, double order entry. So double order entry will come under the heading of method. All these problems, first of all, we divide the category and this, and then, and then we make this diagram. When we make this diagram, it is very easy to see where is the problem. So then we will start to solve these issues. <clears throat> then flow diagram. Flow diagram we are using for any process which we have the process in our hospital. Like you have the process that uh, how you will receive the medication in the pharmacy, that you will make the request, it will start. You will make the request here. So this uh, uh, terminator has an oval shape. This oval shape means start. Then this parallelogram means uh, a process. Then this rectangular means data processing then this diamond means decision. You will make decision here. And this shape is for the procedure call again. And this shape is for output result and then end again with the terminator. So I will give you the example here. Like a business unit, they want uh, here uh, IT department finance purchasing. Now we make here that need define the needs. The business unit will define the needs. Then it will go here to prepare a pre uh, paperwork. Then tech
Dr. Shahjahan, I think we lost your voice. You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see your screen clearly. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, in this picture, if you see this type of uh, uh, shapes, why we are using. So uh, this slide is very important for you. You can review after that, that why we are using this different shapes. So after then uh, last we received the, our equipment or any new device, we decide to yes. And then there's a process. Uh, there are many processes here, and then it's end uh, end again here. So this is these type of uh, 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 shapes we are using for our flow chart when we are making the flow chart. Uh, this tool now we will discuss the Pareto chart. Pareto, why we are using the Pareto chart? Uh, this tool is related to the Pareto 9 9-80-20 rule, which states 80 percent of the problems coming from the 20% of the causes. The Pareto chart is a type of chart which consists of both bars and line graph. It displays the value descending orders as bars and cumulative total of each category as line graph. So here, there will be two graphs combined. The left vertical axis is the frequency of occurrence and the right vertical axis is the cumulative percentage. The ordering help identify the vital few, the factor that want the most attention, and from the useful many factor that while using to know about have a relative similar effect. I think uh, you will most understand when I, during this, uh, when I will give you this example. So if you see here that uh, we have this example of the type of medication errors. So we want to make Pareto chart. The Pareto chart we are using when we have many uh, problems, but we want to know that uh, from this many problems, which is the most useful problem if we will use if we will solve that problems our 80 percent problem will be solved so like you see here those missed 92 wrong time 83 times wrong drug 76 times so here on this line this is the frequency and this is the cumulative frequency percentage so we will just draw a line of cumulative percentages here see this point until reach here, this is the 80%. So this vital few are the problems which are making the 80% problem. If we solve this vital few, then our problem will be solved 80%. Because why? Because if you see what is the major problem, 92 times happening, those missed. 83 times happening, wrong time. And 76% uh, wrong drug. So if we solve this four issues, this is only four, this is 20%, but if we solve 80% of problem will be decreased. So this is, that's why we are saying uh, this one, 90-20 uh, uh, rule. And then uh, we are going to dis uh, discuss this five Y tree. Uh, it is the uh, iterative question asking technique used to explore the cause and effect relationship underlying a particular problem. When we have an issue, that we have to dig it down that why it's happening. Like this example, uh, uh, you cross the signal. So first we will ask five questions here. Why we cross? Because I, I will say I become late from the work. Why woke up late? So why I, because why, why I become late? Because, because I woke up late. Then why I, Woke up late because alarm didn't work. Why alarm didn't work? Because battery finished. Why battery finished? Because I forget to check it. So this is just example. So whenever you we have any problem, we have to ask the five why tree and we have to find out the reasons. And then we have to solve these issues. Now the last one, this is the stratification chart. This is also like a line graph. 
but here this is also a way of uh, just uh, uh, identifying your problem like if you see in this example we have uh, three machines they have defective problems so here uh, this machine three they have more problems and this machine two less and then this machine one less so this is just to stratify your uh, problems now we will uh, go for the questions uh, which is the best graph graphic display to show a proportion pie chart bar chart run chart or Pareto chart as we discussed before that uh, pie chart we are using for the proportion proportion we are using for what we are using for the nominal data so we will use pie chart here the second question the rate of increase or decrease in total medication error over six month period could be the displaying by the use of means you have uh, now medication error over six months so you will use which graph to show that one so we will uh, use Dr. the Shajahan? line graph here which one? yes uh, sorry to interrupt you uh, is it mm -hmm. possible that we will if you have time uh, we will take answers from audience is it possible okay, no problem. or okay, no problem. just five yes, seconds for can. each question they will answer in the chat box and then you can just explain what is the right answer Okay, can you read can you go back to that yeah can you just go back to the previous slide okay previous one uh, second question no no the the question second question yeah uh, do you have previous slide you are saying sir? yes or yes. the question you are saying questions the question slide only Okay, questions like. Yeah. Okay. So we will just, the audience will read the question and they will answer in the chat box and then you can explain the answers. If you have time, if you don't have time, it's okay. You can just directly explain the answers. Okay. No, no, it's okay. Okay, what, uh, what's the question? Okay, so, so what's the question here? Uh, so yes. there's a problem in the network there's a problem in the network it's it's okay yeah you can just talk now you can hear me uh, yes i can hear you yes yes okay, i can hear the you. question please yeah the second question you were explaining so just uh let the audience answer the question and then you can explain the answers okay no problem uh, dear all, uh, please try to answer the question in the chat box so we you will know that what you understand and what you don't understand. So Dr. Shah Jahan will explain you better what is the answer and why the answer. I will give you just five seconds to answer the question too. Okay, the audience are saying Saad and Sundus, they are saying line graph. You can explain mm -hmm. your answer, Dr. Shajan. Salman, line graph. Okay. If you if you can read the chat, it's it will be better. You will know who's answering you. Yeah, yeah, I am on the chat. I see now two response came from Sundas and uh, Saad Salman. Okay, you are right, line graph, because as we discussed before that uh, over the time, if you want to see our, uh, any data we want to see over the time, we will use the line graph. So it's the correct uh, answer. I will go for the third question. I will ask, uh, which display is best to help ambulatory clinic team to decide uh, which 10 reason uh, we have to uh, use first, uh, first. I will repeat again, which display is best to help the ambulatory clinic team, clinic team decide which of the 10 reason for patient dissatisfaction to address this year. 
means which uh, which uh, which tool we have to use to rectify the which are the 10 important tools to be uh, first 10 uh, first 10 problems which we have to address so which we which tool we will use okay server uh, run chart bar chart sad anyone else i will again clarify the question the question is here that we have many many problems and we want to address first 10 major issues which will solve our more more problem so how which which tool we will use okay sandas predator okay malik khwaja d sarat latif yes you are right because as we discussed already that when we have many problems so we will use the pareto chart that we will see that uh, which uh, if we which options or which problems if we solve then we will solve the 80 percent of our issues so here we will use the pareto chart okay now i will go for the second question the primary care clinic uh, track caller telephone wait times is a rec recurring performance twice a year. In the last two months, wait time have been increasing. On the latest run chart, eight consecutive data points all in ascending order with 21 total data. So we have a data on a chart and there is a eight points consecutive data points ascending. If you remember, we discussed it before that if the point of ascending, this is a trend. And so the question want asked this trend, what does it mean that eight point of ascending in the chart? So what is the correct common cause variation, a special cause variation, cyclic variation or astronomical value? We have a chart on the chart, there is the eight points are ascending. As we discussed before, that what is the uh, what does it mean if points are increasing up and decreasing down? Okay, Saad Salman, A. Any other person? Sundas, A. Common cause variation. Okay. Anyone else want to comment? Okay, so uh, I will. I want to just explain that as we discussed before uh, in the control chart and run chart, then when the values are going up ascending way, this means they are making the trend. If there is six point or more point uh, above the central line, it means they are making the uh, shift. So all the shift and trend and the astronomical values are meaning there is a special cause variation. Common cause variation are always within the range 2 point, 1 point, 3 point. But when they are straight six point are going above or straight five point are coming down or there is a straight six point above the central line, it means there is some special cause variation and we have to do the investigation by the root cause analysis. So the answer is here, the, this is the special cause variation when we have eight points are consecutively increasing. Okay, now I'll go for the question number five. Uh, brainstorming is best used to identify or refine cause and effect relationship perform intensive analysis or peer review, subdivide or organize a large number of ideas, identify, analyze, or plan solution to problem. So brainstorming, we are using in which scenario from this four? Okay, Sarvat, B or B? B, okay. Sundas, B. 
Okay. Anyone else? D. Sonia Amir. Good. Anyone else want to comment? Okay. So, Haras, I will uh, uh, explain. Yes, uh, the D answer is correct because we already discussed that brainstorming we are using to get the many ideas that we should have the solutions and many ideas, then we will work on that one. And after that, we will use the affinity diagram and narrow down to them. Now the question number six, an affinity diagram is best used when information is clearly connected to one issue. There's an inadequate information. The volume of information is very large and brainstorming is not enough. So, where, wh which is the correct scenario for the brain uh, affinity diagram? I will repeat again the question. Affinity diagram is best used when we want, when we are using the best this tool. Information is clearly connected the, uh, to one issue or there's inadequate information. The volume of information is very large and brainstorming is not an option. Okay, Zafar Iqbal, see. Anyone else want to comment? Sarvat, see. Sundas, see. Uh, Saddam Salman, see. Okay, so you are right, Al. So it means you understand, uh, which I told you. Nice, well done. This is this because we before we as we discussed that affinity diagram we are using after the brainstorming. When we finish, we have many ideas and we want now narrow down, narrow down. That's why the volume of information is very very large. So we want them narrow down uh, to the list. Okay, now I'll go for the. Question number seven, ask the following, which quality improvement tool best demonstrate cause and effect? Fishbone diagram, flow chart, Pareto chart, affinity diagram. Okay, Sundas A, Zafar Iqbal A, Saddam A, Sony Amir A, Okay, Zareen, sir, A, okay, good. Anyone else want to uh, comment? Okay, so I'll just give answer that uh, well done for your answers are correct. We are using for the fishbone diagram, we are using for the uh, cause and effect. This other flow chart and Pareto chart and effort diagram is not for the cause and effect. Okay, we'll go for the question number eight. Of the following, which quality improvement tool is probably most appropriate to help determine current process? Means we want to show our management, uh, not we, we don't want to show them any problem. We, want, we just want to show them the current process of our uh, light, how we are receiving the medication from the store. We are storing them, who is receiving. We want to show the management the current process. So which tool we will use for the current process? Uh, brainstorming, flow chart, cause and effect diagram, or affinity diagram? Okay, B, Zafar Iqbal, Sundas, B. Okay. Sony Amar B. Okay, so well done. Uh, uh, correct answer. B is the correct answer because uh, we will use the flow chart to understand our procedure. As we discussed before, that we will use the flow chart of different uh, uh, shapes. So that we will know that this is the start of the procedure. This is the end of the procedure. Diamond means this is the decision. So this, uh, this is the flow chart. Okay, we will go for the question number eight. 
of the following which quality improvement tool is probably most appropriate to help oh, sorry we did already okay now we'll go for the question number nine the quality improvement team is responsible for determining whether the data demonstrate special or common cause variation of the following what is the best display option to use run chart parito chart scatter diagram control chart I will explain again the question that we want to see in a graph that there is a common cause variation or no. So for the common cause variation, which graph is easy to understand for the manager? Dr. Shah Jahan, I think uh, we lost your voice again. We can hear you. Uh, sorry for, I think, internet problem. We it's okay, I anything. can understand you. It's okay. Okay, we are going for now the Okay, so I want to see the comments. What are the comments for the question number nine? Sundas D. Rafaq Bal A. Okay, anyone uh, else want to do comment? Okay, so as we discussed before that uh, the easiest chart which is understand for the common cause variation or a special cause variation is the control chart. Because in control chart, again, already we make the upper and lower control limits. So when it will cross that limits, we can see that this is a special cause variation or this is a uh, normal cause variation. So as we are asked, say, come, we want to see the common cause variation. So it's easy to use the control chart. Now the question number 10, uh, the performance indicator, total unscheduled patient admission following ambulatory procedure within 48 hours is a measure of as we discussed before that there are three types of indicator, structure, outcome, and process. So now in this question, they are saying that uh, after the 48 hours of the discharge patient again admitted. So what kind of this indicator of we are measuring? Because we already did the procedure. After the procedure, patient are coming back again. Sundas, see. Sonia Amar, see. Anyone else? Okay. So, Rafael Paul, see. Good, well done, correct uh, Correct answer. This is the outcome because we do the procedure and this outcome is coming. The, this outcoming is showing that uh, there's some problem in our procedure. So this is just the example of the questions. Thank you so much uh, for attending this lecture. And uh, uh, if you need any help, uh, you can get my contact number from uh, Ms. Sarvat for the questions or for the any other detail or any you want to ask anything which you didn't understand because I don't have more time here and there's many things to cover. So thank you so much for your uh, attendance. Any Ms. Sarvath, so can we end or see any questions? Yes, 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 it's okay. It's okay. They can ask, I already informed them, they can ask the questions in the group. And thank you so much, Dr. Shah Jahan, really. Uh, like your presentation was like superb. It explained everything very clear. And even I refreshed my concepts. Like it's been a long time I have certified, but my concepts were like fading away. So it's really nice to have a good refresher. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I, you so will much. Inshallah. I will just end the session. Thank you. Okay.